Logical operations is always one of those topics that gets people's brains ticking over. The title sounds technical, and repeating it makes me sound very clever. But what's it all about? If we explore the inside of this computer system, we might be able to see some of the basic logic gates in operation. Let's pop it open and have a look at the motherboard. Nearly everything you see here is covered with billions of microscopic logic gates. But in particular, you'll find them of enormous use in the CPU and the primary memory. Magnifying our CPU, we can see logic gates being used to build the components of the CPU. The adders, multiplication and logic comparison circuits are all composed of logic gates. But the primary memory, the RAM, holds some of the most obvious examples. Peering through our magnifying glass, you'll see this. It's a flip-flop. No, not the shoe but rather a one-bit storage device. Yes, that's right. This is a collection of logic gates that allows us to store a single binary bit, a one or a zero, in memory. Now, multiply that by trillions of the things and you've got your basic RAM chip. But what are these gates and what are they actually doing? The gates themselves are basic electrical circuits. If you've studied physics or electrical engineering, many of these might be familiar to you already. They can take in true or false values as on or off signals, and we represent these with the binary value 1 for on and 0 for off. And they'll output another binary value according to the properties of the gate. The first gate we'll take a look at is the NOT gate. And this is what it looks like in symbolic form. It's a triangle with a little dot at the end. How charming. It only has the one input, identified here as A, which could be either a 1 or a 0. What's it all about then? Well. A NOT gate will give us the opposite of the input. If A is false, then we get a true value and vice versa. It can be written in standard notation as either NOT A or an A with a little bar over the top of it. There are actually many more ways of writing this, but those are the ones we need to know about for our exam. Now, one of the most straightforward ways for us to see what a NOT gate actually does is to build a truth table. Now this is a table that lists all the possible inputs for the gate and then shows all the outputs from those values. In this case, there's only one input to a NOT gate. So the only inputs possible are 0 and 1. In the first case, where our input signal is a 0, the NOT gate inverts the signal and gives us a 1 as the output. In terms of an electrical circuit, an OFF signal has gone in and an ON signal has come out. This is the reason that a NOT gate can also be called an inverter. In the case where a 1 is the input, then the NOT gate inverts the value and outputs 0. Our truth table is now complete. That's our most simple gate complete, but let's take a look at one that's a bit more complicated and much more useful. This is our AND gate. You'll see first of all that this gate takes two inputs, A and B. Once again, these can be the values 1 or 0 and produces just a single output. You might be able to guess from the name of the gate that it requires both A and B to be true in order to give a true output. You've likely seen these before in films where accessing a locked vault requires two keys to be used simultaneously. It's the same idea but on a much smaller scale. Notation wise, we can either use A and B or the more common A dot B. So if you see either of these styles, they mean the same thing. Now as we've doubled the amount of inputs, we've doubled all the possible states in our truth table. You can see now that we're dealing with each and every state that A and B could possibly be in. It's quite logical, but if you really are not understanding where this is coming from at this point, then just memorizing the correct order would be good. Starting at the top, we start with both A and B being set to zero. In an AND gate, this also gives us a zero output. Moving down, we have the situation where A is zero and B is one. In an AND gate, this gives us a zero output again because only one of the inputs is true, and we're looking for both of them to be. Our third state is where A is 1 and B is 0, the opposite of the previous state. And again, this gives us a 0 output, because only one of the inputs, not both, is true. Finally, we get to the state where both the input values are 1. This is the only time we get an output of 1. So the only way to turn this output on is to also turn on both the inputs. 
Our third gate is an OR gate. And just like the previous one, we have two different inputs and a single output. Look at the difference in the symbol though. Most people struggle to differentiate between AND and OR gates if they're not drawn perfectly. AND has a flat edge on the left, whilst OR has this beautiful curved edge. An OR gate works very much as the name indicates. If either A or B is true, then it will output true. This also includes having both of the values A and B set to true, because either of them is still turned on. Notation-wise, this is where it gets a bit confusing, because you could have just A or B. However, they also use this plus sign to signify an OR, and this is the more common usage. Please be careful here, because a lifetime of seeing the plus symbol as addition means you'll be confusing this for the AND symbol all the time. Remember, AND is the dot, OR is the plus. Let's construct that truth table then. Same input states as the previous example, as we have the same amount of inputs, and we're only able to set the output to 1 if either A or B are 1 already. So, on the first line we get a 0 output, because both inputs are set to OFF but it gets more exciting on our second line where B is set to one, so we get an output of one. Happy days. The same is true for our next state, as it is the inverse of the previous one. A is set to one in this state, so the output is one again. The final state where both A and B are set to one does sometimes confuse people, but think about the rule. Is A or B set to one? Well, yes. So the output is a one here as well. The final gate that we're going to talk about is an XOR gate. This stands for exclusive OR. And yes, we are using X as the initial for exclusive, not because we're trying to be cool, but because an EOR gate sounds like something stopping a donkey from escaping. You'll see it's almost the OR symbol, just with that little extra curve on the left-hand side. So just as before, two inputs, one output, and it mostly looks like an OR. So what is the difference between an OR and an exclusive OR? Well, XOR doesn't give a true output if both of the inputs are on. Aside from that, it works exactly the same as an OR gate. Is one of the inputs set to one? Then you're in luck. If they're both set to the same value, we'll be getting a big fat zero as the output. Notation for XOR is the literal XOR in the star we've seen before, or this more common symbol, uh, it, it's a plus in a circle, isn't it? Well, that sort of follows on because OR is a plus, so this is a slightly different plus. The truth table will be interesting here. It follows the same rules as a standard OR gate until we get to the stage where both inputs are one. So, both zeros gives us a zero output. Either of them being set to one means we get a one as the output. But it's here, in this last state, that it's different. Where we have both inputs set to one, we get a zero output. So that's what we set it to. An XOR gate is more like what you might have if you've got two light switches that control the same bulb, maybe at the top and bottom of your stairs. You wouldn't want them both being set to the same value to stop the light turning off. Otherwise, you'd have to walk all the way back downstairs just to turn off the lights on your way to bed. So now that we know what the gates do, what do we need to be able to do with them to start pulling in the marks for an exam? We'll take a look at that in the next video.